Hi, welcome to Making Game Productions Tools with Bifrost. My name is Maxime Jean Mougin. I've been working at Platinum Games for the last three years as a technical artist, mostly focusing on dynamics and uh, procedures modeling workflows. In today's talk, I will show you how we are using Bifrost to implement production tools by going to two use cases a hair simulation solver, which we use for cutscenes, and a procedures building generation toolset implemented as a, as a collection of compounds. Before I got into Bifrost, my story with visual programming started with ICE. ICE was a user-friendly visual programming framework which was deeply integrated inside Softimage. Back in the days, it revolutionized the industry by making it easy for artists and technical directors to implement efficient tools uh, simply by connecting nodes together. Thanks to its context-associated data, it made it really easy to operate on geometries and build all kinds of effects. Um, after a soft image and of license, I switched to Fabric Engine. So Fabric was a standalone engine which was based around the KL language. User would write KL code or use uh, Canvas, which was uh, Fabric's visual programming framework in order to build uh, fast multi-threaded tools and uh, applications. Uh, Fabric was integrated into all major DCCs and also Unreal Engine. Uh, it was also shipped with uh, extra tools like, for example, Kraken, which was a popular cross-DCC rigging framework. And now we have Bifrost. So similar to Fabric, Bifrost is also a standalone engine which compiles graph to fast machine code. Uh, the graph has a lot of smart features like, for example, compound overload, meaning that uh, the content of a compound can be changed depending on the input data type. We also have uh, autoport types, which works a bit like templates in C++. Uh, it has various port specific options, like for example, port states, which allows you to update a value or an array inside uh, a loop compound. You also have uh, feedback ports, which uh, are commonly used in simulation solvers to get the data from the previous uh, iterations. Uh, another smart feature of the graph is uh, auto loop, which uh, automatically turns uh, a node or a group of nodes uh, into a loop when you feed it an array. Uh, Bifrost is, in general is uh, really flexible while it's still uh, being uh, user-friendly. Uh, in my opinion, it has the best of both worlds between ICE and uh, Fabric Engine. So let's start our first topic, which is about our hair simulation solver. So our solver is a DFTL strand simulation solver, uh, which we use for game cutscenes. We simulate strands, but uh, we apply the result onto John chains. We use Maya and Bifrost to have a better controllability over the simulations. Uh, since we bake the result onto joins, uh, we can simulate at a higher resolution uh, and get a better result than when using the standard John chain dynamics from our uh, in-house engine. The dynamic solver is implemented using a dynamic for the leader method to simulate uh, inextensible hair. It works almost like a traditional position-based dynamic solver, uh, except that uh, it introduces a velocity correction term. While not being as uh, physically plausible as traditional PDB, it's still perfectly viable for use case. So at Platinum Games, we animate characters using motion builders, which means that uh, in Maya, we only get the skeleton and the character geometry. Uh, we generate a rig to allow artists to control the reshape of the hair. And then at each frame, we construct uh, strands from the rig's controller and simulate them. These strands are then resampled to generate matrices, which we feed back to the original joints. Uh, we have a script and a UI to simplify the setup of characters. Users simply select the joints that has to be simulated, and they can optionally add colliders too. Once the setup is done, our script generates all the rig object and the Bifrost nodes. Regarding the Bifrost node, we just generate uh, multiple uh, hair system nodes and a single uh, hair solver node, which uh, is where the simulation happens. 
So to construct our Bifrost graph, we use the VNN Python commands. VNN commands allows you to do any operation in a Bifrost graph. For each graph, uh, we create the compound that we need, uh, create the input and output ports, and do all the connections. Uh, here you can disable and re-enable the graph resolver be before doing these operations in order to speed up the process. There is a, a command called uh, VNN bracket for this. It will uh, speed up the process and make all the VNN operations almost uh, instantly. In addition to the dynamic parts, we also use a rigging solver to make it easy to control the rest shape of our hair. This solver uh, interpolates two driver chains and apply a local rotation offset to the constraints. Uh, this is a common solver used in uh, rigging, nothing fancy here. So how we do that in Bifrost? So the solver uh, takes both the constraint chains and the constraint chains as a 2D array. Each constraint chain has an interpolation fraction applied to it, and we use it to interpolate between the corresponding driver rotations. If a constraint misses a corresponding driver, we simply interpolate between uh, zero and the other driver. Since we're dealing with the uh, local uh, rotations here, uh, it doesn't create any problem down the line. So here's Jan from Bayonetta 2, which is the test model that was used during the development of this tool. Uh, here we demonstrate how we typically set up characters. For each air group that is needed, the artist simply select the uh, chain stop joints and add them to the list. Once the hair group has been defined, the uh, setup script generates a rig object and a dynamic solver, and then we're ready to simulate. And here is simple uh, work animations with the default settings. So let's talk about the hair system graph. The hair system graph has two functions. First, uh, generate the strands from the Rix controller and initialize the simulation's parameters, which we store as pure point uh, geo properties uh, on our strands. So let's look at how we construct the strands starting from uh, the Rix controllers. First, we generate the plane strands, which we only use to compute the length ratios. Then we generate a smooth uh, catmulram spline, which passes through all the original points. We then uh, resample uh, this spline so that the points are evenly distributed uh, along the curve. And finally, we generate the basis vectors which are needed for the local shape preservation constraints. Once we have this, uh, we can pass our strands to the simulation solver, which we'll talk about next. So let's now look at the hair solver graph. So this graph is where all the simulation related operation happens. Uh, in addition to the solver itself, we also initialize our colliders and also convert our gravity and wind controllers to vector forces. We then pass all of these data to the simulate hair compounds, which you see in the middle here. The hair simulation, the simulate hair node is where all the uh, simulation is processed. So our solver uses the same uh, simulation standard as in all uh, other built-in solver in Bifrost. We store all of the data into a single uh, solver object, which is then passed uh, into a compound uh, using a feedback port in order to get the data uh, at the previous frame. Then at each frame, uh, we apply the simulation routine, starting by updating the previous and uh, last positions, applying the forces, uh, integrating, solving the constraints, updating the velocities, etc. 
Speaking about forces, we also implemented a custom wind force into our hair solver. Also, our solver can take uh, bifrost field influences. Uh, we needed something that worked uh, nicely on uh, low polygon characters. Our custom winds take the scenes controller's orientation and generate oscillations to the strands based on the length ratios, the point indices, and the various uh, wind uh, related parameters. And here's an example showing the custom wind in action. So I'm not going to go through all the nodes here, but uh, I just wanted to talk about how we process the constraints. Since the, the FTL constraints are inherently sequential, uh, we can compute uh, everything concurrently. So what we do here is uh, process each strand in parallel and then process each substrand uh, sequentially. Uh, another thing that we implemented here is uh, motion naturalization. This was definitely needed because we do a lot of uh, action cutscenes. So we opted for the velocity shock propagation method, which was introduced by AMD and is currently implemented uh, inside their trace effect simulation solver, which you can find uh, on GitHub. It's uh, open source. Uh, we could have implemented a, tri a trivial motion naturalization based on matrices, but we found that uh, VSP uh, to be a very attractive solution because it does not rely on uh, external uh, matrices. VSP uh, automatically enables itself when a strand moves or rotates faster than a given acceleration threshold. So here's the same walk animation from before, except I applied a large offset on the X axis. Uh, naturally, the strands inherit the fast change of motion, so a very strong force is applied on the hair. And with VSP on, we can blend how much of that force we want to retain on our simulation. Okay, so once we have our strand simulated, we still need to apply the result on our join chains. So to do that, we use the original length ratios to sample the strands in order to get the final joint positions. To generate the joint orientations, we apply a parallel transport using the y-axis of the first controller of each chains. Finally, we convert our matrices from world space to local space and connect them to the original joints. And here's an example showing both the world and uh, local matrices. OK, let's start our second and last topic, where I'll introduce you to PGB, or Procedural Building Generator. So PGB is an artist-friendly procedural building generation toolset implemented as the collection of uh, compounds. It was heavily inspired by Akira Saito's work, which I highly recommend you to watch. You can check his uh, select talk from 2019 called uh, Mass Predictions of Procedural Buildings. And why do we use Bifrost? So nowadays, when it comes to procedural stuff, uh, Houdini is most likely the most uh, popular DCC application out there. However, our artist at uh, Platinum Games uses Maya to do all the modeling, modeling tasks. So naturally, they, they wanted to have uh, procedural tools uh, directly inside Maya. And Bifrost was the perfect candidate for this. So here we have a very basic example. Uh, where we use uh, meshes directly from Maya and apply PGB rules onto them. We edit the input meshes to show that our system remains fully procedural upon edits. So PGB is based around face tags. Uh, face tags are string labels which are stored on each faces of the mesh. All PGB operators takes one or multiple face tags as input to determine on which face to operate. 
because our system does not rely on indices, our upstream topological changes will never break uh, downstream operations. So here's the process used in all of our PGB modifiers. Uh, we start by searching uh, which faces uh, to process by comparing the face tags. The targeted faces are then extracted from the mesh and are processed in parallel. The modifier will generate new faces, which will also carry their own uh, face tags. Finally, we merge the remaining faces with the newly generated faces. So PGB compounds are flexible enough to allow artists to use either daisy chain or branching workflows. Each compound outputs the global mesh, but also outputs uh, individual ports for each newly generated groups. The user can use these uh, individual ports to separate a chain into multiple branches, which can be processed in parallel. And we can merge these uh, branches anytime using a dedicated merge compound. And here's a very simple example where we generate a building uh, using a daisy chain operations. The color you see represents the actual uh, face tags. So we have a growing collection of compounds. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll show you the most interesting ones. Uh, all these nodes have uh, terminal flags so that the user can enable them to see the results at each uh, specific step. Uh, they also have a dedicated diagnostic flag in order to display uh, some special debugging uh, utilities. So, First, the divider nodes. The divider nodes are the most commonly used nodes in the PGB collections. These nodes uh, divide faces and generate uh, new faces in different groups. The user can control the divisions by using two length parameters. The divider will then calculate how many faces can be generated inside uh, the source faces. And for technical reasons, the length of the group A is always fixed. And we adapt the length of the group B uh, depending on the available space. Uh, users also have access to various modes to control the repetition pattern, like AB, AB, or either A or B at each boundaries. Um, depending on the needs, some modes are more suitable than others. They can also define the direction of the divisions, uh, either horizontally or vertically. The direction depends on the world orientation of the face. If the user wants to have a division horizontally, the component will determine uh, which edges has to be used uh, for the division. To do that, we search for the lowest uh, half edge vector and simply pick the next uh, vertex indices as a reference. The divider compound is almost the same as uh, what was uh, showcased in uh, Akira Saito's talk. Uh, we saw the concept was uh, really clever, so our implementation has the same features. Again, if you want to know more about it, I highly recommend you to uh, watch his talk. It's uh, really interesting. Random tag. So this node simply takes uh, face tags as input and apply uh, new tags to a random selection of them. Uh, this node only has a single uh, amount parameters uh, in order to control how much of the original faces we want to overwrite. Uh, this can be used to apply a randomized variation to the building or even uh, assign different uh, materials to some faces. The instancer is a very important node because we can't add all the needed details procedurally. Uh, with this node, the user uh, are able to apply uh, handmade assets onto our procedurally generated building. The assets are stretched so that they fit into the original faces. We can also preserve the face tags of the source geometries, which is typically used to keep track of the material IDs. The extrude compound works uh, almost like the Maya extrude node. 
the main difference is that it targets uh, face tags, uh, like all other PGB compounds. It has some extra features like uh, transformation and uh, smart UVs. Smart UVs are uh, very useful to maintain uh, continuity between the original surface and the extruded uh, faces. So the scatter node is a very basic compound. It's a variation of a Bifrost built-in scatter compound. It only has some extra features like a border offset and a overlap avoidance. Uh, this is typically used to generate uh, assets randomly on the roofs or uh, walls. So the pipe compound is a work in progress tools which uh, generates uh, pipes procedurally. Uh, we don't use it in production at the moment because it has some flaws, but uh, we wanted to show it here uh, anyway. Finally, we have the random shape compounds, which is used to create uh, random building shapes. So this node selects a random point on a grid, uh, performs a random walk, and uh, grow the selection. We then generate a strands on the selections outline, uh, filter the low frequency corners, and uh, reduce the point count to the strict minimum. Finally, we triangulate the strands using an air clipping triangulation algorithm, and we have our mesh. And here's an example where we apply simple PGB operations to uh, different random shapes. So we are not done with PGB. Uh, there are still many features that we'd like to add, like uh, Boolean operations or edge-based workflows. We would also like to evaluate how we could uh, leverage uh, by first USD to generate our buildings. And finally, we'll investigate if we can uh, integrate Bifrost directly inside our in-house game engine in the future. It could be really useful to generate uh, assets directly at runtime. Okay, so I wanted to take this opportunity to say that uh, we are hiring. We have a position in all our departments at both uh, our Osaka and Tokyo studios. So if you'd like to work at Platinum Games, uh, feel free to have a look at the recruitment pages there. Here's my contacts if uh, you'd like to get in touch with me. Uh, if you have uh, questions regarding this presentation, uh, feel free to drop me a PM on Twitter. I'll make sure to answer all of them. I also have a blog where I occasionally write some Bifrost related articles, so feel free to have a look at it too. I'd also like to say that we have a Discord community de dedicated to Bifrost. We have an over uh, 600 members now and it keeps growing. So if you're new to Bifrost and are looking for help, or if you just want to show off your work, uh, feel free to join us there. And that's it for this presentation. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Platinum Games for their support during the preparation of this presentation, and also a huge uh, thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring the talk. Thank you for watching.